We need to secure the building and arm the exits with our explosive triggers before we can take control of the rooftop. So until then, consider yourselves hotel security. And once the bay gives us account access codes and Donald transfers the money, we pull out. Gentlemen, let's move. Oh, and someone get rid of the body. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. Die Hard with a Penis was completely eradicated by just dicks. Guess what I was thinking of? Dicks. Hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. Oh, and of course I lose my page that I was looking at earlier and cannot find it. Ah! Anyway, uh, well, right. well, glad you're here. And for the greater good. <laughs> <laughs> but it was supposed to be in Portuguese, and now I can't find the, the page. got it. Why was it going to be All in right. Portuguese? It was going to be in Portuguese because we're we're doing so well in oh. Portugal. I figured we could we could try to uh, wow. you know pander, no pander exactly. That's yeah. cool. Exactly. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate yeah. that. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, I was um, I was really kind of blown away by that. So if you don't, if you're listening and you don't know what I'm talking about, I posted uh, the other day um, that um, it sounds like someone just opened a beer that um. <laughs> What you got there? Oh, it's a it's a Lacroix. Oh, it's, it's a Lacroix. Yeah, Lacroix. Yeah, it's La like, crotch. Yeah, La that's, yeah, crotch in a can is what it tastes like. Ugh. Um, Ugh. how dare you? Yeah, it's yeah, the it worst goes. thing I've ever. Anyway, so um, I posted on uh, there's a chartable website called chartable.com and it pulls information from Apple Podcasts and Google and whatever, and it showed us as having the number fifth. Uh, film reviews podcast in Portugal, and uh, yeah. by the as the as of as the time of this recording, we've gone from fifth to ninth. So we're oh, uh, man. we're oh, that's dropped. what happens that's when why. you lose the Portuguese uh, yeah. recording translation. Like, yeah, yeah, you know. that's what that's what you guys heard when I was preparing for the for the show that I was trying to oh, be gotcha. fine, and now I still can't find it. I must have accidentally closed it out. No, that's okay. Well, lo siento, Portugal, lo siento. So, speaking of yeah. this show, this is episode three hundred and sixty-four, and tonight we're talking about Game Over, man. Game Over. I had to do it that way. I am Sean Allred, and joining me tonight is Andrew. This movie has more dicks than an Andy Dick movie, Jimison. Yeah, doesn't it though? Yes. Um, <laughs> I I actually let me see. I think I took some notes here. I just want to refer to my refer to my page. Um, <laughs> aim your aim, aim your paper higher there, Andrew. Go higher I'm for the sorry, camera. I just need to. I need to. <laughs> That's a really good drawing. Get my notes. Here. All right, hold on. I didn't get a good look at that. Do that again. No, yeah, that's okay. Sure that's, it's all right. Sure, that's an O in your notes and not a U. What's that? Where Where do you see? I don't. <laughs> For the listener at, at home, Dang it, uh, I can't get the screenshot. A beautiful <laughs> drawing of what I believe is the state of Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was inspired by Jonah Hill in Superbad to, oh, yeah, that's to, right, that's to, right. to really become an artist of sorts and, and specialize <laughs> in, in just one thing. Um, yeah. Because, you know, if you're good at something, stick with it, you know? Why, why exactly. explore? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no. So again, legit for the people at home, Andrew drew a really lovely picture of a of a big wiener. I just want you all to know that. So, I uh, just just be, yeah. just be prepared. If you listen to this show with children around, it you should be first of all really blue. This, uh, this yeah. show is going to be. This, this, if you listen to the show with children around, shame on you. Yeah, you're bad parents if you do. But also, uh, don't 
especially this episode. Sam. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Cause, cause you will yeah. get a dick thrown at your face if you do. Yeah, no, legit. Yeah. Like, actual. This is what's okay. going to happen. Um, like yeah. the gif of the guy or the girl getting hit with hot dogs. Like, that's this episode. Just want you to know that. Like, this is the audio <laughs> version of that video format. Uh, Sam yeah, exactly. once distracted what? a bad guy with his wiener, Vector. <laughs> Couldn't make it through without laughing. For, who are pretending to be dead in the in the in the uh, in the closet? Yeah. Audio. Yeah. Uh, auto uh, so, asphyxiation. Right? Asphyxiation. Yeah. And Sean, just so you know, yeah. I've been trying to throw this lamp at you for <laughs> at least fifteen minutes, but it's plugged in. It's plugged in, and it's just it's just not working. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I mean, you sometimes know, why... sometimes you get an outlet that's like really tight. You know, sometimes yeah. you plug something in, and you're like, "Geez, right? this is," you know. So no, maybe yeah. you know. So why don't more people pretend to be dead in movies? Like you know, you that being makes chased. sense, right? Yeah. yeah. Like they say, play dead when you're being chased by a bear, but that doesn't make any damn sense. But if somebody, if a person is chasing you, uh, or or you know, not chasing you, but they're coming in your, you just fake it. Fake a heart attack. Lay Think over. of all the animals in the animal kingdom that fake dead, and it works, right? Yeah, but so. we don't do that. We run away because we're intelligent human beings. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. I just I think it's amazing that that was his first thought. Was like, I have an idea. I, I haven't done this in a long time. Like that was the thing that he wanted to <laughs> to distract the guys with, and of course, then those two dudes. We're becoming be, becoming aroused by it was the I think the the, the <laughs> which the, does make you wonder the bigger joke who who has he faked his death in front of before right yeah yeah <laughs> anyway the movie we're talking about tonight is yeah. Game Over Man yeah well actually whoever that strange voice is I don't know who that is yet oh my script tells me that it's Steve wow. That guy really stuck his face into that guy's butt, Everett. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most respectable thing that happened in the whole movie. Honestly, that was maybe my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> That's just called a Tuesday night. Oh, my God. I just I love the fact that the guy was like, all right. Because it because at first it was like he didn't want to do it. But then he was like, okay, I got to save this dude's life. So I'm going to do it. And then he just went for it. And the guy was like, oh, this is actually kind of nice. This is... And then when he's like, okay, enough. And he's like, no, man, I'm not done. And the guy's like, no, keep going. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. That whole just thing. a little it's longer. So he says, just it's... a little longer. And then when he finally made him stop, he was all sad. <laughs> oh my yeah, god! We have all been there. That dude. Oh my god! That guy was well, insane. Not, not exactly there, but yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't have your rock star lifestyle there, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> so, Tossing three hundred pound men's salad on yeah, the road. So right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're three dudes that work for the state. You know, like the state does that to us. We not the other way around. Yeah. There you go. There's my my commentary yeah. on working for the state. I'm a little I'm a little uh, personally angry at what's going on right now with in regards to just a little personal thing. And if you work for the state, also you'll understand this. My wife has to go through three hour every Wednesday a night mandatory training that she doesn't get paid for. Mm -hmm. Like anyway, there's sounds there's, like a big old bag of hell. No, that's uh, there's my soapbox. I'm getting off of it anyway. This is Game Over Man, 2018's Game Over Man. Over it was a, a Netflix original starring three dudes, of which two I've never heard of. Um, <laughs> uh, Adam Devine, Divine, Divine. Wait, have you never? Him. Wait, have you never seen yeah, Workaholics? No, I've never seen Workaholics. No. Oh, then these are just three random dudes to you guys. Yeah. Well, Adam Devine is I've the seen guy. Him in Pitch Perfect. Though. Yeah, it's the guy from Pitch Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's divine. Divine, yeah, okay, divine. Yeah. He's so divine. I didn't. I did they make reference in the movie that his name is Alex with three X's? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and what was funny is he. The joke was he said my name is Alex with three X's, and he goes one, two, and then he stops and he goes, oh yeah, three. Like oh, <laughs> I do remember that part. Yeah, because yeah. then the guy he said something about you do know that three X's is poison, 
and also a Vin Diesel movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is really kind of the same thing, though. And then Baby Dump goes, yeah, that's right. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know these dudes at all. So uh, Anders Holm, who played Darren, who I honestly thought for the first half of the movie was the dude from um, uh, Vote for Pedro. What's that movie? Um, Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, yeah I thought John he was... John Heater. Yeah. He, I thought it was really? Really? Yeah, I thought it was the same dude for like half the movie. Well, tell me what is what is workaholics? Is it this type of humor? It's just those three dudes playing the exact same characters, but it's a TV show. Interesting. Okay. Like is so it like basically is... Netflix said we can't call this workaholics, right? But we're gonna have your you guys come in and and do yeah. this for us. And like yeah, so th- you know they've they've like written together for a while, and they're like you know a team, so. People just kind of wanted to keep him as a team, I guess. But Anders actually like wrote this screenplay and produced the movie and stuff. The guy who you think looks like John Heater. <laughs> Such a hot John Heater. Yeah. Like John Heater would love to hear you say that about him. <laughs> uh, let's see. Workaholics is a single camera comedy featuring, featuring three friends who work together as telemarketers from nine to five and live together from five to nine. All right. And okay. it stars those three dudes and a bunch of other dudes. It's been around a long time. It's 86 episodes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Type of, type so, of show you have where they make you a movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Good for them. Yeah, I clicked on Divine's uh, IMDb page, and I do like the fact that he's also in another movie with, uh, what's her name? Um, Rebel Wilson called "Isn't It Romantic?" because they were a mm-hmm. a weird thing and Pitch Perfect. So that's 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 nice. Uh, anyway, but this movie is not Workaholics. This movie is a g- Game Over Man. Uh, Andrew, tell us what is this movie? Game Over Man. Well, three friends are on the verge of getting their video game financed when their benefactor is taken hostage by a terrorist. And there we go. Okay. And then what happens? <laughs> well, and, and and I have a question. Is it's not really a video game, is it? It's it's yeah, it's Nintendo. Well, but that's the it's thing. A it's a it's a suit that it's that's the, that acts as like the full body version of the power glove, right? Right. Actually, it's kind of like yeah. what Ready Player One does. Like it's the full suit that controls the character in the game. And you So it's really not the game. It's it's like a suit that controls the game. Yeah, but you still have to have it's the interface. IMG. The yeah, the, the 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 suit is the interface for the game. So I guess the question <laughs> well, I'm would... so confused at this point. <laughs> I guess the question would be like, do you I guess they'd have to have some kind of like USB connector into the, your your Xbox or your PlayStation to, <laughs> to hook up the the suit. I just love it when one person who barely understands something explains it to another person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's not a whole lot to understand, what right? Like, like what I got from this movie <laughs> is that Nintendo was a suit that you put on a human where you could control that human. That is that what I got. The, from that was movie. the upgrade. That's that the, upgrade. the upgrade. Like that the, was the upgrade. The, okay. <laughs> don't tell me I paid more attention to this movie than the other two of you. I know Stephen, you you've seen this at least once, so you, you probably. Knew. <laughs> but like, that was the point. I watched right? it last night. Like like the because he literally starts off the 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 pitch with "Do you like black people?" and of course everyone turns and then like the it's like the black lumberjack or whatever and then you control him with the suit. And then you you're like in this like World of Warcraft kind of world where you're using the suit to walk around and do things. And then the upgrade is that Steve can log in and with his suit control your suit, which seems insane. But yeah, <laughs> no, I for some reason, I, you know, in terms of things you need to know in terms of vital information in this movie, the actual <laughs> way the skin tendo suit would work. Is is not what I paid attention to. Oh sure, <laughs> but what did yeah. you pay attention to? Because either it's the skin tendo suit or dicks. I mean, that's about the whole this movie is. It was this. And I, 
<laughs> hey, there was also misogyny. Yes. Oh my gosh, I, yeah. I paid attention to and what what surprised me was I had no idea this thing was going to turn violent. Oh yeah. I I when I I had no idea what this was going into this movie. So when I wrote you guys and I think I texted both of you guys, boy that escalated quickly. Yeah. When the guy gets hit the hit with the the knife, I was like, "Holy crap, where is this thing going?" <laughs> and uh um, I was well, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get and what's there. that security guy's deal? Like the old guy with like the young girl sexting him, you yeah. know, videos. It's so weird. Like, because at first yeah. I thought it was just a video. He was just watching porn. But then when he says, oh, no. I got to go. Yeah. And then you hear the voice say, I'll talk to you later, baby. I'm like, wait a minute. That's a okay. relationship? Like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. And she's, she sounds like friendly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Really weird. It's clearly, uh, it's a mutual beneficial relationship right there. Yeah. Well, he gives her money and she gives him her ass. So yeah. 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 That seems pretty mutual beneficial. So uh, I guess we'll just yeah. go ahead and say, Sam, what was your five word review for this movie? All right. Um, I've got I've got two. Uh, the first one is uh, Die Hard with a Penis. <laughs> mm, that's <laughs> so good. Die Hard with a Penis. <laughs> <laughs> this December, join us for Die Hard with a Penis. <laughs> but um, my second one was Dumb Stupid Comedy, But Fun. And oh I I went into this movie totally expecting to hate it. Totally expecting it to be a really dumb, idiotic comedy that that just... It, 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 I don't know what it was, but it totally totally changed my opinion about... I don't know, 10 minutes in, I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. When the guy smoked the drugs in the hotel room <laughs> and was tweaking on the bed with his <laughs> friends in the room, I was laughing so freaking hard. I, it, I I don't know what it was about this movie. It hit me at the perfect time, and I had so much fun with this. And so, Sorry to interrupt you. Can I, can I just ask real quick? Because... I don't know, and you guys do. Does Salvia actually hit you like that? I mean, dude, it... Salvia hits you so much harder than anybody got hit in that movie. Oh, okay. Wait, is that you a real thing? You can't, you can't just like you can't smoke Salvia and like I've never done it, but I've been around a bunch of people who have, and it it, it lasts like two minutes, and you like. Your body contorts. Like I've seen people like run through doors on salve. It like you go outside your mind for like a couple of minutes and it is unpleasant. No one likes salvia. That's that's like a joke within itself. Like no one would do salvia. <laughs> I didn't know that was well, real. It, it it shows you how innocent I am because I had no idea what salvia is. Yeah. And I thought it was a fake drug. Um, that they made up for the movie. I did too. So, it's, a synth they, it's a synthetic drug. Because they okay. even kind of make fun of me. He's like, I'm thinking about rebranding it because no one wants to buy something called salvia. So that's why like, I thought it was just a made up thing for the movie. <laughs> no, it's like, a, I like it, Uncle Sal. That's a good name. Uncle Sal is a lot better. Uncle yeah. Sal. But yeah. If you're, you, you just have to watch one person smoke salvia in your and lifetime. You and you, wanna, yeah. And you're like, oh, no, no thanks. So. But yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the comedic humor in this. I loved all the cameos. I loved uh, Steve-O getting his, his brains blasted out. The dog exploding in the aquarium. <laughs> Poor dog. Um, I love the fact that the bad guys... It, it, to me, I almost call... I, I almost made a five-word review somewhere around the fact of... This is like Tucker... Uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, only the diehard version of that type of comedy. Yeah. Right. Where where these guys, they don't you don't you can't take them seriously. And it's not like the type of comedy where they are trying to be funny and and trying to be serious at the same time. These guys are idiots and they're, yeah. they're perfect idiots. And <laughs> I just think it's I, I had a, I had way too much fun with this. And it's it's always hard to do comedies. Right. It's always hard because. Who knows how it's going to hit everybody else. Um, obviously, I, I'm still wrestling in my brain how to rate this thing later on when we do our top 10 or out of 10. And um, because Lord knows I can't recommend this because when people would see it, they're, they're going to be like, what did Sam 
what? Why did he tell me this was funny? Why did he, you know, there's so many penises in this movie. What is wrong with him, right? Um, hey, there's I only laughed. one real penis in this movie. I laughed so hard in this movie, and I, I, I thought it was a blast. All right. Thank you. Yeah. By the way, Steve, thank you for recommending this on my my end, at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think it's even on last week's recording when we said what movie we were doing. And Sam just went, ugh. <laughs> right? It was. Yeah. Because I I I had no idea. And and I was so Oh, yeah. When, when I picked it, I had no idea what it was. <laughs> nice. Well... Again, I when this came out uh, a couple years ago, I remember thinking this would be good for the podcast. This would be like it just looks like three idiots and die hard. So it's actually been on our list to do for basically a year and a half or so. Uh, and mm-hmm. it just kept getting pushed because of reasons. And then we had a, you know, 2021 has been the year of the guest. And so finally we had a guest that wanted to do it. So. <laughs> So again, I too, oh. I, too, I too, thank you, Steve. Um, well, and let's let's also pay close attention to how violent this movie is. Yeah, and and how overly violent this movie is, and even that in itself is funny to me. The uh, I mean, this is like exploding, like the, Suicide uh, Squad uh, levels of violence, or the Suicide right? Squad. Yeah, yeah, and and they do it so well; it doesn't look bad it doesn't look cheesy it looks really really good yeah and also everyone in this movie that's not the three dudes are like just they're all psychopaths i mean they're just i mean i guess Mm -hmm. technically the (laughs) the two uh lovers in the night on the bed i guess they're not technically psychopaths but you like everyone is just willing to kill anyone else for the whatever reason you know i mean like the 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 crazy uh lady with the fake german accent i mean the poop on her head. Yeah, the with the poop on her head and the wiener <laughs> on her face. I mean, like, it's not just the fact that she throws the knife and kills the old man watching his porn. It's the fact that she picks up the knife and then licks the blood, which made me laugh because then Neil Mc, uh, Neil McDonough just rolls his eyes like, ugh. Like he's even he's like annoyed by the trope. Yeah, yeah if you're if you're on IMDb and you're scr- I like to do this while we do a show. Uh, I like to scroll through the the set pictures or the you know some uh, screenshots from the film that they have posted on IMDb, and I think it's like the it says yeah twenty second picture on this on this roll here is the picture of her laying with the spike through her stomach, but there's also Daniel Stern's penis laying right beside her. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> so I don't know if this is an explicit image or not. <laughs> oh. oh, and when when Sean's uh, Sean's wife Stockbelganger is shaking it in front of the face of uh <laughs> of the person, I just was I was yeah yeah. I, Sam mentioned to me that yeah that my wife's uh, doppelganger was in this movie. Uh, I don't see it. Neither does she nor Andrew. Um, Stephen, in your thoughts, wait. Who do you think is her doppelganger? Exactly. The, the hotel exactly. manager girl. <laughs> There's only two women in this movie, and if Steven doesn't know who it is, then obviously Sam's insane. Yeah, I don't I don't I didn't see anybody look like Sarah, but Okay. Right. I think it does. That's fine. It's it's obviously <laughs> you you haven't seen my wife in many years. Um that's fine. Uh Andrew, what do you got? All right. So I have only one tonight, and I didn't, I'm not very creative either. So I have crude humor, so many dicks. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's that's pretty much the movie. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of with Sam in the fact that it it caught me. I, listen, I, I've been moved. Well, okay, listener, I... Uh, <laughs> I moved Senior. away from my family because I took a new job. And so every weekend I drive home to, to nobody gives a shit about this, but uh, I go home and see my family every weekend. And this past weekend was really hard. Like the first couple of weeks, it was kind of like a little vacation or whatever. And, and anyway, on Sunday, like I was really, really hurt. Like I just, 
I had a really hard time leaving and, you know, my kids were crying when I left and I was crying and it was like this big, ugly cry fest. And so I needed this movie in my life this week <laughs> because all of the, the sadness <laughs> that I had uh, was completely eradicated by just dicks. <laughs> Boy, wouldn't I love to capture that out of context? Yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, but no, this movie just uh, it fifteen year old Andrew would have yeah. been all over this movie. Like this would have been right up my alley. Um, is it a great film? No. I mean, is it inventive? Is it well written? No. But. Uh, it is a decent story. Like, I don't think I've necessarily ran into this story before, but there are some things that I question, like why do these, why does the security team show up at the hotel at this moment to me? You know, it, there's, there's a lot of uh, coincidences that, you know, I know it was all planned out by his butler, but, <laughs> who wasn't a butler, but, um, you know, it, it's kind of lazy writing in some aspects, but it was enjoyable, and I laughed and had a good time, and uh, you know, it it was something that I needed, so it hit me well. Is it something again, like Sam said, that I would recommend to others? No, because I don't want them to think any worse than they are. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I kind of want people to watch it though, yeah, because you yeah, can I laugh mean, about it, right? It's like. I, it's it's an, like it's one of these kinds of movies that it's embarrassing to like it. So <laughs> I know that this this is probably the worst scene in the movie, but when this dog gets an explosive strapped on it and they put him in the fish tank and he's just swimming around like I just laughed at that before he was even blown up like poor dog just swimming laps around this tank getting more tired and more tired and he's gonna drown like. <laughs> and then he gets blown up, and there's bloody water all over the place. And and then uh, they make the joke about man, that dog had a lot of blood in it. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, like, must have been a bloodhound. <laughs> the, the, I do like the fact that this movie didn't take itself seriously. Like I yes, know when they okay. released, they just had fun. And I was listening to an interview with uh, Judd Apatow uh, talking about how hard it is to to write comedy. Uh, and it's much easier to do just drama and and and, and straight movies, but um, but comedy is so difficult. And he said sometimes I just want to write a dick joke because <laughs> it's easy and it's funny. And I think that's what they did in this movie. They just you know <laughs> they just did a bunch of dick jokes and uh, add some action to it. So yeah, so that's where I am. All right, right on. Yeah, it, it absolutely looks like they had fun on set. They had to have had a blast on the set of this movie. Yeah. Because it, they, they they all looked like they were enjoying every bit of it. It's definitely a workaholics. Uh, it, it, it also reminds me of like a, a Jonah Hill, Seth Rogen type film mm -hmm. uh, where it's just crude humor because it's funny to the people that made it and they don't give a shit if other people find it funny or not. They're just going to make this movie and i think that's what they did i'm glad they did because it's funny mm -hmm. all right steven what, what's your five word review my five word review is nice to see some penis honestly <laughs> like you know we've been making these movies for a long time and there's just always so much female nudity and it's it's not fair. It's just it's not fair. Like we we need to be equally represented. Like let's go ahead. I want to see some big ones, some small ones. Like let's let's take the stigma off of it. And uh, you know, I, you have to be so courageous to to be that guy, be in this movie, Kevin Devine. Just like yeah, just film my naked penis in a movie. And you know, and it's just it's so crazy. Like it has that shock factor when you see a dick in a movie it's like oh my god is that okay how do i feel about that and that's good that's like what art is supposed to do so i love it when anybody's <laughs> like crossing barriers you know uh, i will say that 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 scene is when when i really started watching the movie right like, right because crap, they're, what are they doing in this yeah right? because you, re you respect them taking risks and taking a chance yeah. and yeah, you know it that, it, 
Yeah, like, and that's any kind of good art. Uh, that's going to be its function in some way. And uh, even if it's something that's like frivolous and horrible, like this movie is, but uh, <laughs> I do think there's some like redeeming little moments in this movie to, that, like you, like you both have touched on, like it, it, it is, it's fun. But I, I kind of the things that I think are more redeeming about this movie are the fact that they were like, you know, we're not really going to have female nudity. We're just going to have a bunch of male nudity. I think that's a, you know, obviously like a, a shot at the patriarchy a little bit. And then, uh, you know, I enjoy um, that, uh, you know, one of the guys, you know, toward the end of the movie, you know, has this big, like, I'm going to come out to my best friends moment. And they're like, yeah, we've known that you're gay for like 10 years, dude. It's not a big deal. Like this is what you do when you're, when you're drunk, you you tell us you're gay. (laughs) And I just, I love that. So it's like, you know, these guys are like toxic masculinity to, to the highest level, but also like, uh, kind of are on the right side of certain issues, you know, and they're they're expressing their emotions and they're, you know, it, I, it's just very interesting. Like it's such a, for there to be such a mature uh, undercurrent in this movie, I think is just like, you know, you you can really you can truly do anything you want now. You know what? You you touched on something that I didn't even notice. I was so blown away by all the male nudity that I didn't realize there was no female nudity in this movie at all. Yeah. Yep. That's. I I think we're learning a lot about ourselves tonight, guys. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's funny. So, um, I was chatting with a coworker today, and and I was kind of giving him the lay of the land. I said this was an interesting movie, and I said not one that your wife would would enjoy, but you know if you're if you're in the mood for for this kind of thing, I say go for it. And uh, and that was one thing I did mention, Stephen, specifically, though I didn't go nearly as uh, well thought out as you did uh, and didn't really talk about the social commentary as much as, as well as you did. But I did say, you know, this movie kind of changes the, the trope of having, if typically, like in Die Hard, even in Die Hard, there's still boobies, right? Even in like, it's only like, you know, less than two seconds of screen time, but because it was a product of its time, like you had to have, yeah. you had to have it, right? So like this movie says, all right, well, f you uh, trope, we're gonna have male nudity, and mm-hmm. and we're not only gonna we're gonna showcase it in a way that's both funny and uncomfortable, and, right? Uh, like that's that's what uh, I, I I'm agreeing with you 100 percent, Stephen. That in a, in a movie that's this dumb, uh, bravo <laughs> for them for for doing something weird and different, and you know, so hey. I mean, the last time we saw a movie with any kind of male nudity was that Midsommar movie last year. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. And uh, it was. Do you, mean, that do you mean Midsummer? Whatever. It, it's an M M O A R. Whatever. <laughs> well, all I know is that it gave me bad dreams. That's what I know. Oh yeah, that was still, a wild one. Yeah, yeah. It still yeah. bothers me. Let me ask you guys a question. Yeah. Which one of us? We're in a hotel. Which one of us? passes out and and who's the one that takes the jizz filled condoms and places it on the other space oh, like oh, 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 oh my god <laughs> that scene oh, made me, i wanted to throw up at that scene oh my god and, oh it's so gross and he even he made the comment and again i didn't even think about it until he made the comment i'm holding the poop end of this brush <laughs> yeah. so that i can pick up the condom uh, just uh, there was every every bit of that scene. I was gagging, yeah. just <laughs> thinking Even about. The guy how on the dirty bed that. is just he's so <laughs> tweaking out, <laughs> and then then he's trying to get out of being tweaking when they start putting it on his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like he was making you, dinosaur like, noises. This... <laughs> what was the guy? Tom Green. Tom Green. Yes. So back in high school, yeah. we all probably watched Tom Green on MTV. Yeah. It was about that time in my life that I know Sam, you were already graduated college, but yeah. the, the rest of us, we, you know, that kind of came out in high school time somewhere in there. And uh, that, this kind of humor became popular then. And I unfortunately was that guy that like everyone else was like, do it, go do it. And I would do it because I wanted people to laugh. Uh, <laughs> and I never did, of course, anything gross like that. But I remember being in uh, uh, junior beta club in ninth grade or something like that at the uh, convention in Greensboro. And this pizza guy got on the elevator uh, and he had a box of you know pizza he was delivering to a hotel room. 
and I had a disposable camera and I said, can I take a picture of your pizza? And he just kind of looked at me and I was like, no, seriously, open the box. And the other guys on the, the, uh, the elevator dared me to stick the camera right on top of the pizza. Oh my oh. And so oh. I just laid it. I didn't, you know, I didn't press it down. I just laid it there. And he, I thought he was going to punch me in the face, but he closed the box and delivered it to the, the room that was getting the pizza. I don't know who got it, but oh. somebody got my camera pizza. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would have been pissed. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, I've been pissed. I don't, I don't. I wouldn't have skipped a beat. Like if a if a pizza shows up and there's like a disposable camera inside of it, I wouldn't even ask questions. I I would eat the whole pizza and I would throw the camera away. Yeah. Oh no, I'd get the camera developed. I'd take it to our good friend Cornelius at the time, who worked Cornelius. at the, uh, who worked at the WalMarts and said, "Hey man, I gotta know whose pictures these are, and if there's some dirty ones, you need to pull them aside for me because I gotta know." It was this, yeah, this but that's the look. kind of humor that this. You know, it's very Tom Green, yeah. Jackass, you see, know, see, Euro trip. See, Steve, Euro and you trip. and I grew yeah. up together, and we did not do stuff like this. Not in high school. Well, I, mean, I had dumb friends. Well, we did what, too. What do, you, what do you mean, do stuff like this? Like kill a bunch of terrorists? Yeah. Well, we definitely didn't do that. But I mean, like, well, of you course, didn't blow up somebody's head. No, no, we didn't do any of those things. I mean, we played pranks on each other, but there was also. Um, to be fair, there wasn't like, uh, at least not in high school, it wasn't like we were in a place where there were prophylactics, used prophylactics all over a bedroom somewhere for us to uh, whatever. But yeah. Yeah. So did you shoot guns in, in the general direction of your friends? <laughs> well, <laughs> Steve and I shot BB guns at each other. Does that count? Yeah. No, 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 I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> Did you shoot? At, did you shoot at me? Well, I shot near you. Shot near you. <laughs> Jeez. I honestly was waiting for one of them to get, get like grazed, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. or a bad guy to hear all the shooting and show up. You know, like which I, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Uh, That's how they got their hot stone massage. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, by the way, that actor, um, I know him most from the TV show Reba. Oh, and he was uh, he played a character named Van and oh, I forgot all about that. Yeah. Dang, I forgot all about that. Yeah, I did. We watched Reba. I, I, I do. I did love that. Uh, the scene where uh, Kevin Devine's character, you know, tries to pretend like he's autoerotically asphyxiated himself. <laughs> and then the two guys, you know, totally throw us off after. Uh, you know, in the beginning, one of them called the other one the the f word as it refers to homosexuality. Sure. And then we find out that they they just start going at it. And I was like, this is good, man. Like, there's just so many things. I feel like this movie was, they made it, and they were like, all right, let's make this entertaining, but also like really force men to <laughs> look into some <laughs> issues that that bother them. And maybe that's how they got Fred Armisen to say he would be in it. Yeah, and he didn't do anything. Like I was, was going to say, was, there was, was a lot kind of, of that, though. Yeah. Well, but at least some of the other cameos of people that are real, you know, at, at least um, owner of the uh, Dallas Mavericks, um, Mark, Mark, Mark Cuban, Cuban, at least he had lines. At least, yeah. um, what's his name? Uh, Faison. Donald Faison. Yeah, at least he had lines, but <laughs> like, what are you doing here? Drummer man, like he's just hanging. Fred Armisen's just hanging out. Like it was really. I, I weird. wonder if something got cut that he was in. Like if there was a deleted yeah. scene because yeah. that's a big name not to do anything. And I think, I think he really was a hopping man. I don't. We saw him and then we never saw him again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, he wasn't killed though, right? I mean, no, he wasn't no. killed. No. Yeah. Okay. Neither was um, <laughs> Shaggy. From what we understand, <laughs> what's hilarious about that on, on so many levels uh, is that you know he's like sing this song that you did not sing. You know, like Shaggy's a rapper; he's not a vocalist. You know, the idea of like, but he he just he doesn't just go straight to his part. Shaggy doesn't. He's like, I know what you want, and you want this part that I don't actually sing. So he's like. <laughs> Picture this, we were both butt naked, banging on the bathroom floor. <laughs> Just like a regular voice. And then he goes into... <laughs> he 
sings it like an elementary school kid would sing it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the uh, the credits here on the the listing. It's, I mean, it's yeah. You've got so Mark Cuban as Mark Cuban, and then you have Joel McHale as Joel McHale, who takes a mm-hmm. shoot to the temple. Good yeah, lord, yeah, high heel. She's like, I'm so sorry, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then you have someone named Sugar Lynn Beard as Sugar Lynn Beard. Mm-hmm. I don't know who that is. I don't know if I'm she sure. was a uh, voice of uh, something in Sausage Party. And uh, yeah, I clicked on that and saw that, but I don't know. She's yeah. Baby Carrot slash Cookies in Sausage Party. Yeah, um, and something called Unpregnant on HBO. Oh dear. Oh, she was also in Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates or something, which also has Adam Devine. Oh yeah, I saw a little bit of that, which is all anybody should ever watch. Well, it's she got... also did an episode of the Fla- or a few episodes of the Flash. Oh well, good for her. Uh, and then Shaggy is Shaggy. Let's see, Chris Pontius as Chris Pontius. I don't know who. That oh yeah, is. he's the other dude from Jackass. Oh, so that's why I don't watch Jackass. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't have known that. But now, now that I see his picture, I yeah, I got you. Um, let's see, who else? Fred Armisen as Fred Armisen. Mm-hmm. Classic, um, classic Fred to do that. Steve O as Steve O. Uh, Donald Faison. Uh, yeah, I haven't found him yet. He hasn't shown up. Scrubs is his. Great show. Yeah. Uh, I don't see. Oh, there he is. Yeah, Donald Faison. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of people that are real people in this movie, which is which was really interesting. I I really enjoyed that, uh, and was thrown off just again completely thrown off by it especially when they pulled donald face on up he's like i can get you or i can get you stacy's number <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that, that cracked me up um oh i didn't do my five word review my five word review oh wow yeah oh, that's fine it happens uh a team plus die hard i'm using die hard as two words so this movie a team a team because there was a lot of Hmm, we need an idea. Oh, I know. I have an idea and I will build it. And then they build the contraption. And you know, okay, like they build the they build the zombie robot and then they build the um the the, the zip line thing. The zip line thing and they build the smoke weed uh saliva thing or uh, saliva silv <laughs> salvia. The, thank you. Salvia. salvia. I had silva. I'm like, "No, that's western Carolina." The saliva thing. Saliva thing. They build that thing, which would have been really an interesting way to go. And instead, I was also confused as why it only affected her evil German lady and not the other dude. Because the both guys, like they both ran through it. But I guess she got. Yeah. Um, I, I I expected them halfway to make a comment like, "My tolerance is really high," or something like. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just not. It's not something that you would just casually do. <laughs> it's a. Just stay away from it at all costs. Well, and and again, the movie does a thing, right, where it kind of turns the, the on a tear, right? So when she's all effed up and laying there, the guy just smiles and says, oh, we're going to have some fun. So, you know, your brain automatically thinks he's going to do dirty things to her while she's all effed up. Like that's, at least that's what my brain went to. And then the next scene, when you see them again, he's just <laughs> drawn a bunch of penises on her and poop on her face <laughs> and taking pictures <laughs> He's like, that's really funny. And then she shoots him. And <laughs> and uh, again, just reminding you that everyone, in, you know, all the, I mean, just like, uh, anyway, of course, he's, he's dying. He said, I thought it was funny. I thought that shit was funny. <laughs> <He> just dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Which I God. hope are my dying words. Yeah, I hope it was at least <laughs> funny. Oh. Uh, and also the Neil McDonough shot to the face. I didn't see that coming either. I, you know, no. cause you see him on TV and you're used to seeing him as usually a bad guy. And, yeah. and I think I'm like, okay, he's, he's the big heavy. And then when you find out he's not the big heavy and he kind of turned into a, like a sniveling kind of wiener uh, to keep the, uh, more of a, more of a light. No. <laughs> yeah, so I watched this at work. And yeah, I at one point had to turn my laptop so that you could not see it from the door. Oh, sure. Yeah, I was worried about that one. No, oh, well, why, Sam? <laughs> well, just because of all the penis, <laughs> the peni. 
Actually, I mean, I mean, again, as we as much you know, we've made uh, m- mentioned that there's a lot of dicks in this movie. There, I mean, it's probably a total of about four minutes of screen time, but <laughs> but there's a lot of violence in this movie that's throughout the movie that would you know certainly mm-hmm. be, um, whatever. Uh, Steven, you also mentioned uh, the misogyny. Good Lord, uh, Daniel Stern, what a douche. <laughs> I mean, yeah, man. He, just, he literally taps her in her lady bits and says, sack up. And I thought, <laughs> can we do that? In, we can't do that in 20. Even we can't in, do that. We yeah. can't do that no, in 2018. No. But, you know, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't tell the story, but I'm going to. So as a teacher, I've seen quite Sean a bit. Sean, record this. Oh. Yeah, I know. Oh, good. As a teacher, I've seen quite a bit in the past 15 years. And I swear to you, there was a, a group of girls when I first started teaching that they played a game that they called Vag Tag. And they would oh, literally geez. they would literally run around and tag each other in the vag. And they had and here's the thing, like they had a trophy. Oh. And, they they went to a trophy shop somewhere and had a trophy made. It was a normal trophy. But on the plate, they just got a blank plate, I guess, and they wrote with a Sharpie, Vag Tag winner. And they would pass <laughs> this around the school. So we would see, like, they had to, have, like, have a assembly about this. Like, you can't go tapping people in the Vag. <laughs> so that was the, the game, was to tap each other in the... It wasn't like... I guess, you know, they probably saw in middle school, they probably saw some guys like flicking each other in the nuts and as boys do. Um, And then they were like, well, we should do that. So they had this badge tag game. um, And, you know, not not to be disrespectful, but the stakes are lower. in Yeah. 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 But they they took it a step further, though, with the trophy, which I appreciate. If you're going to play a game, then, yeah, let's have some stakes. I I like it. (laughs) I didn't write a whole lot of notes on this movie. Um, Good, because there really wasn't a whole lot to to write about. Well, I was gonna say, well, other than you know, this scene was funny. This scene was funny. This was yeah. So yeah. like, the, my first note was Daniel Stern is looking rough, but I think they probably make yeah. up make up him to do that. But the other thing is, like, you, I kind of forgot how tall he is because when he's standing next to Joe Pesci, anyone is tall, but. When he's standing next to everyone else in this movie, like he's he kind of got like a little bit of a, you know, he's got that little age kind of bend over. He's got a little bit of a, you know, kind of hunch over a little. He still looks like he's six foot seven. I mean, he looks yeah. huge on camera. Yeah. I think and, it's just that everybody in Hollywood is like five, five. No, you're, you're not wrong. I mean, everyone is in Hollywood is short. I mean, when, when like, when Chris Hemsworth, uh, Chris Hemsworth, a bad example because he's legit six four. But like, even when, you know, you get an actor that's like, Six feet tall to walk on set. They they still look you know, you know, massive next to like Tom Cruise or whatever. Yeah. So then my next wrote, note was, "Wow, Stern is a dick." And <laughs> then I wrote, "Ooh, she's gross." And I guess that's from the the lady who licked the the knife. Licked thing. the blood. Yeah. Uh, and then I wrote, "Can you die from de penising?" That was literally the wrote the line I wrote. Uh, yeah, that was uh. As I was watching it last night, I was like, "Why is, I was like, why is he dead?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would take it would take like a day. Yeah. Well, you, I, I think, think we shocked. are probably think, yeah. we're probably the age where we remember John Bobbitt, Lorena Bobbitt, that yeah. whole story. I mean, that, that kind of hit right as I was understanding what it meant to have a, a penis, uh, in sexual terms. But, but remember uh, how it got pitched to us, like. She had done a bad thing. Yeah. And now yeah. I'm like, dude, good for her, man. Cut that dude's stick off. He was a piece yeah. of shit. He's a yeah. jerk. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but, it was famous but, enough, it made it into a Weird Al song. <laughs> yeah. Daniel Stern, his character kind of reminds me a little bit of that in a way because he was like, I, I don't care. This cut off. We'll get it re- reattached. We'll put that thing on ice. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah, we're in California. We can we can do something about it. I'll have a grown. Yeah. I'll grow a new one. <laughs> he didn't. He care. says he says whether I get it reattached or reanimated or whatever hell new thing. <laughs> yeah, reanimated penis. Um, I also was that band name. Uh, yeah. Uh, I also wrote this is a this is Die Hard, but it's self aware. I mean, they're yeah. making Die Hard jokes in the movie, which I thought was pretty funny. To be fair, Die Hard didn't have to be self-aware because it, there wasn't a Die Hard yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. 
Uh, and then I wrote, this movie has way more man wiener than I was expecting. Uh, <laughs> holy shit, neck bombs. Those things were pretty gnarly. Yeah. Uh, damn, he killed the, jo- the dog. And then I wrote, <laughs> did they kill... Uh, I, I, I wrote the wrong person. Um, <laughs> I wrote Joel Kinnaman, but that's not the right person. Joel, Joel McHale. McHale. Joel McHale. Who's Joel Kinnaman? Do you know what though? They they killed a Chihuahua, so nobody really is gonna m- make a big fuss about it. If it would have been like a Labrador, they'd have been oh yeah canceled. Oh god, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. But the fact that it's a Chihuahua, even when it's about to drown, you're like, I mean, I just don't, I don't care. Well, also Had that it been dog one of was those pretty... Chinese crusted things. Nobody would have even. <laughs> I mean, also in fairness, that dog was pretty dumb. I just, I get, I know it was trained to just swim back and forth, but what dog just does that? Like. Right. If you I threw, threw a, my throw dog Paul over. Yeah, it would just climb to the edge and try to get out like right. <laughs> any normal dog would. Anyway. Um and then I wrote, I think I found a new horrifying way to die. And that was when he started slicing that dude with the meat with oh, the yeah. sandwich oh, slicer. I went, I went to Jersey Mike's today too. And Ooh. as they were making my sandwich, guess what I was thinking of? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Dicks. No. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) I tell you what, getting. Sam, that is a good laugh, man. (laughs) Getting our material for the opener is going to be real easy for me on this episode. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> I I say you know we might have to put an e tag on this one. Yeah, um, we might. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> oh good lord! Uh, <laughs> and then my last note was, oh my god, the wiener toss. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, and when the when the girl who looks exactly like your wife was uh, yeah. was flailing it in front of his face, there's like there's blood coming out the tip oh. and being squeezed out the top. It's so yeah. realistic. That was the only <laughs> moment that I was like, oh why? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it yeah, made and I, a noise. It made noises, like it was like a, <laughs> it, yeah, it it made noise, and she's squeezing the heck out of that thing, man. It was. Ugh. What were you gonna say, Andrew? No, I'm just gonna say I think that a good comedy m- makes you uncomfortable, and this one definitely did that in many different ways. <laughs> and when you can when you can make your audience uncomfortable but still keep it funny, uh, that's you know I. I, I I read some reviews on this and they weren't great, but and I can understand why. But if my mom is reviewing this movie, she's gonna not give it a great score. Yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet. Uh, as Sam has already mentioned, it's <laughs> yeah, kind of hard. Right? But, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only note uh, that I put under trope, other than the diehard trope, was. Uh, the trope where there's a group of people and then they have a thing that breaks them up and then they have to have the other thing that brings them back together. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's that that happens a lot in movies. <clears throat> usually, though, it, it happens in like Hallmark movies, but that's fine. It's usually not a trio, though. It's usually you know, the couple. Uh, yeah, that's it. Anything else you guys want to say before I do the clips? Whew, I don't know. Uh, hey, Sean, behind you, it, it looks like Buffalo Bill went to Costco and got an extreme amount of lotion there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Not, he's not actually saying that in the shot of the camera. No, he's looking no, at it. no. He's quoting the movie. Steven started looking at the camera. I did like, too. I was like, what is behind shot? Where's all the lotion? No, I almost no. turned around. I was like, wait, what is behind me? Oh, yeah. No, that line made me laugh, though, when he yeah, was that like, was... that's a Buffalo Bill amount of, uh, went <laughs> to Costco amount of lotion over there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I also did like good for some one-liners. Who who painted that? Did you did you paint yourself naked on a throne with boobs surrounding you? (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, when I saw that painting, the first thought I had was like, "That's awesome." Yeah, (laughs) it's just like, man, he looks great, and there's like boobs and and money, and and then I was like, "Don't, Stephen, no." You okay? It's a trap. It's, yeah, um, yeah. No, in his room. I mean, just I, I love the whole thing about his room was just that it was just a, a nightmare, and 
I know. I, I will say that Andrew Devine, he he graded on me a little bit as the movie wore on. I, I got a little exhausted by his, because his delivery is that quick, a lot of words, and yeah. and just says yep. just ridiculous things, you know. But uh, so I, I will admit, I, I towards the end of the movie, I was a little physically exhausted from hearing him talk as much as he does because it's yeah, you know. But it's still again, I, he's one of my favorite parts of the of the Pitch Perfect movies, and he and, he has a very Vince Vaughn way of delivering his mm-hmm. line a little bit, yeah. Vince yeah, Vaughn but that way it's too, like but, frat but boy, frat boy Vince Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, time for a couple <laughs> clips. Here we go. Time for this. Donald, get linked up with our offshore bank accounts as soon as possible. Well, you didn't bring me along because I look like the black nerd from Die Hard. Because I don't, Roger. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. That was my first like big laugh in the movie. Yeah, that that got me good because yeah, I love it when you think it's over and then there's just like a little for the, for those that stayed stuck with me. Here's a little reward. Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, I I feel like a a jerk. Um, I spent you know a good thirty seconds before the show looking for the clip and then I forgot to play it. So joining us tonight is Steven. Everett, I I I, yeah. I I had to go find that clip and I forgot to play it. Taking care of business. Oh go. shame! I know I'm terrible. All right, there's that time. All right, was this is here we go. This is a weird thing to say. Band aids and butter beans. We're online. Conrad, we're online. Awaiting an access code. Band aids and butter beans. I've I've never heard of that, but okay. That's what you're supposed to eat on New Year's Day. Oh, ew. Ew. <laughs> I don't like either one of those things. Uh, Donald Wait. Faison saying his last words on this earth. I could get you Stacy Dash's number. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the best pep talk ever. I want to be the fertilizer. I'm the shit. And you guys are the little idea seeds that are going to be planted within me and we're going to blossom and, and, and make a little Skintendo flower. Yeah. Right? That's, Skint- that, Skintendo uh, flower should be a game for sure. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that rivals the Bill Pullman speech from Independence Day for me right there. Yep, just makes you want to get up and save the world. It really does. Um, here's, things I'd, here's a line I didn't think I'd ever get to copy or to capture in my life. Sledgehammer spin punching robo zombie. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Kind of sounded like Jack Blacked in that clip. He did. Oh my gosh. Sledgehammer spin punching robo zombie. Very cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah. If yeah, I would have said that right. Jack Jack Black made a made a cameo. Uh and this was the last uh this was kind of the last funny moment for me. Somebody get my dick for me there, huh? Little help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little little help is always little. No, nobody, a lot of people don't say little help. There's a very specific type of person that's good. Little help. Yeah. <laughs> was that from, that was a line from uh, what was it? Uh, the baseball movie he was in with the rookie of the year. The yeah. rookie of the year. No, he got major, stuck between those doors. League. And he was a, no, no rookie little, of the year. Oh. Daniel yeah. Stern was the yeah, equipment yeah, yeah, manager because yeah, yeah. he had the great line. He goes, you know, some guys like when they're done playing, they like to get in the hot tub and some guys like to use ice. Well, I just had a brilliant idea. You heat up the ice. Hot it's the best. ice. Hot ice. It's the best of both worlds. And the yeah. kid's just like, okay. And then like during the, the pennant race, he's locked himself in the equipment cage and he can't get out. So that's when he's doing that. Little out. Little out. Is that, uh, that? is that, Angels in the outfield or rookie of the year? I think it's rookie uh, of the year. Rookie, rookie? No, no, it's neither. It's the manager one. It's the kid that's the manager. Um. Oh, so now I gotta look it up. <laughs> it's not rookie of the year because rookie yeah. of the year is the kid yeah. that. Yeah, the, the rookie of the year is the kid that can throw the baseball really, 
really yeah, hard. Yeah, he has the like his the tendon broken arm. gets reattached. Fun- yeah, when yeah. he screams "funky yeah. butt loving," did he just say "funky butt loving"? Yeah. Oh yeah, because that's whatever movie that this is. He has like a massive lip of tobacco in at all times. Oh, uh, oh our friend is Melissa rookie of the year. would would know this because yeah, it, it's, it's one of her favorite movies, apparently. Yeah, it is rookie of the year. Okay, so I'm so confused. Yeah, he is. Yeah, rookie of the year, the kid with the arm. Yeah, but that's yeah. that is him. Dang. Okay, I was getting. He directed that movie, guys. Daniel he Stern really. did. He directed that movie. I didn't oh realize he directed it. That's amazing. That's how yeah. popular. That's how popular Home Alone was. Got Little did he know, twenty years later, he'd be throwing his dick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang in there. A little help. Uh, hold on, D- director. Let's see. He directed uh ten episodes of The Wonder Years, and then he did Rookie of the Year, and then he did three episodes of something called Complete Savages. An episode of the Paul Reiser show. Uh, two episodes of Manhattan. And now he's in pre-production for something called The Last Lap and Everything's Peachy. So he hasn't done anything in six years and now he's doing And that's two... his only movie was The Rookie? Yeah. That was a decent kid movie. Yeah. I don't know if was. I remember right. You know, yeah. I want so badly for them to... I want him and Billy Crystal to, to do another City Slickers City movie. City Slickers. Yeah. yeah, I really do. Like yeah. out of the retirement home, back onto a horse. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, they need their space cowboys moment. Yeah, yeah. But Steve, yeah. you have some pull. Like you're, you know, you know people. Yeah, yeah. I'll. Yeah. Uh, you make that happen. Thank you. He's in an that. episode of Workaholics, also. Which is probably how he came across this. I would guess. Yeah, that's funny. Anyway, there's that. Uh, that's all the <laughs> things I have for there. Time for this. And now for some more bad news. Ready? There's not a lot of trivia on this. This is one of the uh, those Netflix movies that just doesn't have a lot of trivia. So uh, Anders Holm, who I think looks like uh, John Heater. Markovich. I yeah. thought you said, I thought it was Heater, but Heater, whatever. The guy. Uh, character his his character requests that Mark Paul uh, Glosser Gossler Gossler thank Gossler yeah there's too many Wait, double isn't that the, isn't that the guy Morris. from uh, Richie Rich Mark Paul Gossler no that's no. Macaulay Culkin that, yeah that's Macaulay Culkin no 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 <laughs> you're not thinking of the original Richie Rich oh you're thinking of uh, the cartoon <laughs> <laughs> there's no. there's an original Richie Rich yeah, because it was a comic it, book. The, yeah. It was a show back in the day because I remember I desperately like the reason I want pinball machines and arcade machine in my house is all because of that stupid show. No, it's because of big. Richie Rich. Okay, I'm confused. So there's the movie from 1994, mm-hmm. and then there's a movie in 2015. It was a, he eventually became an actor on um, CSI New York. If I remember right. Oh. I'm so confused. Mark something. Yeah, Mark Paul Gossler is on one of those crime shows for sure. Yeah, right? But he's known as Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. Like, that's his yeah. known for. Oh, okay. Well, the and he was in, he was in uh, uh, Dead Man on Campus with uh, Tom Everett Scott. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um. I'm really Mark, digging Mark into. Mark Paul Gossler has been off-putting in everything he's ever done. We loved him at Zach Morris, but Zach Morris was an awful character, like morally yeah. bankrupt in every way. Yeah, he was yeah. kind of a terrible person. You're not wrong. Like Pam from The Office, just like reprehensible behavior <laughs> Paul, from start Paul, to finish. How is Pam reprehensible? Oh, oh dude, rewatch The Office with the idea in your head that Pam might be the worst person ever, and it'll it'll change everything. It really does. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I haven't watched The Office yet, but I'm slowly going through it. So I will do that as I watch it this time. Yeah, just like time. everybody's making jokes, and you know Jim's pretty good about making sure nobody loses, uh, you know, or is on like the being made fun of end of his jokes in public, you know. But Pam is just <laughs> ruthless. <laughs> yeah, and so back to uh, Mark Paul Glossler. Why can't I say his name? 
Gosseler. Thank you. I don't know why that's hard for me to say. Mark Paul Gosseler. It was hard for me to say when he was Zach. He was on CSI for um, about five episodes. He was yeah. on Franklin and Bash for uh, several years. Yeah, he's one of the main like characters. A, which, uh, yeah, he's one of the main characters with the guy from Road Trip. And Breck and uh, Meyer. Sure. And what the hell are we talking about? Why are we? Is it? Was he in this movie? No. Yeah, well, the, okay. <laughs> right? Why are we? Okay. I must have we, zoned out. Like. <laughs> I was wondering what was going on myself. Okay. Were you drawing again? At the end of the movie, at the end of the movie, when they're like, when Mark Cuban says, I want to make, I want to turn your story into a video game. And so he says, you get to pick the characters that you you get to pick the actors who are going to be your. Oh, okay. And so Uh, one guy's like, so the one guy, uh, Divine says, I want Sean Astin. And Anders Holmes says, I want uh, Zach Morris. To play his video game character, the reason why the, the, the trivia is that uh, Mark Paul, that guy, Gassler. thank yeah. you, replaced him on the TV show Mixed Ish. Hmm. Yeah. So, That's a spinoff of Blackish, and yeah, yeah, kind of. Which is a spinoff of the original Whitish, <laughs> which is all of the TV okay. shows ever before. It. <laughs> and lastly. Which is so funny because when you go to IMDb and you just go under cast, right? So Adam Devine is number one, Alex with three X's, and then Darren, and then Joel, and then number four is Chloe Bridges as Diana or Diana. And I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking, I don't remember any Diana in this movie. I, I she, I'm saying like, this this movie has two women. I mean, there's all the little women that are mm-hmm. hanging around. Yeah, you the got bay. Sean's, Sean's wife and the crazy. <laughs> And the one um, who shit her pants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's three women. Yeah. She had. A, she did have a line. The woman that that you know pooped herself, and then there's the woman <laughs> that does looks nothing like my wife, and then there's the crazy German lady that licks knives, and so I'm like, who is this other Diana, Chloe Bridges? Well, apparently, um, the woman that makes out with the guy at the beginning of the film as the guys are cleaning the room is Adam Devine's real life girlfriend. Huh. <laughs> that weird. Which so, makes it funnier that he says as they leave the room, like she's not she, even that hot. Exactly. That's what I say. That's what makes the line <laughs> funny is that she's not that hot. That's just funny. Okay, that's it. That's literally all the trivia. Um, okay. Good. Because the rest of the trivia is Adam Devine also worked with such and such in this movie, and he worked with the the Bay on the Pitch Perfect movie, and he worked with like there's just a lot of that kind of stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't capture it, so I do this. Excuse me while I whip this out. Boy, that is so appropriate for this episode. Good mm-hmm. Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, this uh, this week we decided to do movies that have uh actors playing, you know, doing cameos who are playing themselves. So I thought that that would uh. I think that would uh, think be pretty pretty appropriate for this movie. So, Sam, why don't you go first? All right. So, as I pull it up, I've got my number three as uh, Neil Patrick Harris and Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Crap. Play, plays Neil Patrick Harris. I've got uh, John Malkovich playing John Malkovich in Being John Mal- Malkovich. And my number one is... Every single person in the movie of this is the end. Oh yeah, sure. Because uh, there's like all of them. Yeah. 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 And uh, I, have you guys seen that? By the way, I actually looked to see if that. Yeah, was yeah. That I would have not. Seen that's, yeah, the, that, that's the that's the third of the one. Cornetto trilogy. I've not watched. Yeah. No, no, that's end of the world. Or oh, um, the, the, uh, this is the end has Seth Rogen. And all oh, of that. all of his buddies. That's basically. why I haven't watched it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Sean, you're thinking about yeah. Dune. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. But <laughs> so, yeah, that's mine. All right, cool. Um, let's see who should go next. Oh, I know. It should be Steven. There you go. God, I love that. I'm glad. I'm glad to do. I want to inject that into my veins. Um, hello, Steve. Hi. Here. 
I uh, number one actors playing themselves in movies. I I don't know why I like this so much, but as soon as Sam Jones came on screen playing Flash Gordon in Ted, um, uh, it, you know, like it's it's incredible. It's just because he's like old and washed up and he can't move real good, but he's like real well. But he's like you know doing cocaine and drinking and just like at a party and you know has a it just is a, is an absolute just cliche and it's just fantastic sam jones playing flash gordon in ted we're not playing flash gordon but being referenced to as flash gordon sure nice are we on the same page yes yeah you're good uh okay. number two would be bruce springsteen in high fidelity when he's playing for john cusack at the foot of his bed because john cusack is making a hard choice and then bruce springsteen gives him like sage advice yeah. Which what movie? And high, I don't think I've ever seen that one. Oh, High Fidelity is like one of my favorite movies of all time. You gotta check it out. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, just go ahead and watch all of John Cusack's movies from before 2000 while you're doing it. Yeah. Didn't he? Yeah, we've, wasn't he? Uh, we've had Gross Point Blank on our on our list to do for forever, but it's just never streaming. Oh man, that's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I'm a huge John Cusack fan. All right, and the third one I had was Neil Patrick Harris and Harold and Kumar, but oh, obviously nice. that's that's been mentioned. So I'm gonna switch it up to. <laughs> Dead air. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, off the top of my head, I'm 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 blanking. What about so. the sequel? Do Neil Patrick Harris and the sequel to Harold and Kumar go to White Castle? No, I didn't care for that. <laughs> <laughs> no sir I don't like it alright uh, okay I go next and I'm surprised we didn't have any overlap maybe Andrew will who knows uh, so my number three is Arnold Schwarzenegger as Arnold Schwarzenegger in the rundown <laughs> I used it two weeks in a row nice, nice. wow nice yes uh, Bruce Willis as Bruce Willis in Ocean's 12 okay yeah mm-hmm. And with Bill the, Murray, with the Julia Roberts that wasn't Julia Roberts, but was Julia Roberts. It was. Yeah. That, I, I hated that part. I really did. But oh man, you know. that was like Inception. That's where Christopher Nolan got the idea. I'm yeah. sure that's exactly what happened. And Bill Murray as Bill Murray in Zombie in Zombie Land. Land. Yeah, nice. that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Andrew. Okay, I have uh, coming in at number three, Bob Barker and Happy Gilmore. Ooh, uh, that's so oh, good. Nice reference. I totally forgot about that one. The price uh, is wrong, bitch. <laughs> I have uh, Simon Cowell in Shrek 2. Really? Yeah. He's in Shrek 2? He played himself as an animated character. Oh, my when God. They did, uh, like, whatever, fan- whatever the place was fantasy land or whatever the name of the i think that's the third one well maybe it's shrek 3 i, I don't remember the third one, one but you're it's being no, a real rivers. Rivers. right now yeah joan, you are uh, joan uh, rivers is in the second one that's true yeah yeah uh and then i have number one chuck norris in dodgeball oh that's such nice. a good one yeah that's another yeah. good great one there there's a lot of uh singers that have been in movies that i i didn't know if we should count them but i've got as honorable mentions, I've got Tom Jones in Mars Attacks. Mm. Tom isn't Tom Jones also in one of the Vacation movies? Oh no, that's Wayne Newton. Oh, that's Wayne Newton. Yeah, okay, he's yeah, in, sorry. He's in Vegas Vacation and Billy Idol in The Wedding Singer. Yeah, oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Take that T-shirt David off Bowie in Zoolander. Uh, Dolly Parton in The Beverly Hillbillies. Ooh. Yeah, and then Michael nice. Jackson in Men in Black too. Dude, Beverly but Hillbillies. I, the, the I love Beverly when Hillbillies. The, when the French lady is like, happiness is so hard to find. And yeah. Like, what? Like, She's like, happiness is so hard to find. He's like, oh, happiness. happiness. Oh, happiness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she just <laughs> smiles. Happiness is so hard to find. Oh, uh, my gosh. Yep. I like that movie. I don't care what you say. I like that movie. Uh, the 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 thing we just you just said with the jokes and the stuff. Okay. Andrew, ask him if he likes 1998's Godzilla with Matthew Broderick. <laughs> Do you like that? We saw it. We did it for the podcast, and I mentioned on that episode that you and I saw it in the theater twice. I like that movie today. I'll watch it right now. Oh, I my gosh. It. There's nothing Hank Azaria. Yeah. It's a dumb movie, but whatever. We didn't care in 98. We were having a good time. 
Yeah, All movies yeah. are dumb. We're in space right now. You know? know. <laughs> like just have a nice time. Yeah. The uh I also love the kind of little uh the little reference to it in Armageddon because those are the two big block- blockbusters that year and the little dog goes and eats a Godzilla toy in the beginning of Armageddon. So yep. Yeah. There's a what's, weird What's funny is that Sam's favorite movie is Armageddon on. So that's a topical. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah Flubber. Flubber. Sure. They made a Flubber oh, that's joke right. in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's rub it in our cheeks and see if we can bounce real high. <laughs> <Did like it. laughs> because that joke only works if you've seen either Flubber or the original Nutty Professor. Like right. Or pornography. Well, well, well Otherwise, no. how will you know what's going on, you know? Yeah, I guess. But uh, yeah, I just... That's a joke that I like. There's a specific audience that that has to get that joke. So anyway, I appreciate the joke. I think the uh, best you can do with the joke is find a specific audience. But that's yeah. just me. All right, moving on. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I've been trying to do for seven years with this podcast, and I still haven't found that specific audience. But, but that. But we got you, Portugal. That's yeah, right. Yeah, we Portugal. got you, Portugal, and and uh, I mean, we got a few few awesome listeners who who um, we even had. Believe it or not, Stephen, we had somebody buy merch from us. Wait, Although I didn't know we, you sold merch. I'll buy some. Yeah, yeah. we got merch now. Yeah, man. It's, uh, Although we just lost her from yeah, this, this, episode, this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah Rosie, I'm I'm sorry. Over well. yeah. <laughs> Rosie, please don't give up on this. You're you're the best. Um, she I, turned I, this off so long ago. She probably did. Yeah. I might. Yeah. Anyway, Rosie, you're the best. And I will play this now. Wait, what's supposed to happen? This is where we give this movie a score from zero to ten. Zero being zero and ten being ten. I don't know why I needed to explain that. Andrew. <laughs> I am gonna give this a uh Can I give you real quick, can I give you IMDB gives this a five point four just as a reference for five point four. Mm. Anybody else that cares. Yeah. Is it a great movie? No, but is it something that I enjoyed watching because I'm a twelve year old boy? Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, so I can't really score it as if I'm saying this is a good film, because I think that's our job is to say uh, our films good or not. Um, but I will add this and, and far be it for me to defend this movie. But did this movie meet your usual criteria, Andrew? Were you looking at your phone during this thing or were you? Well, because you know usually to, for you, you have to be engaged in the movie the entire time yeah um you know that's kind of one of my qualifiers is if uh, if a movie keeps my attention but i think it kept my attention for the wrong reasons <laughs> wow uh, you're just looking for that know, next wiener right i don't know if you know but there's a, some dicks on screen in this. Yeah. but uh <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know it, I, i'm gonna i want to say it's around a five something for me but I can't put five something in the spreadsheet. <laughs> I know. So what? It's I'm so do, hard. Well, it 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 it's so difficult. Look, you know what they call a doctor do that graduates last in their class, guys. A doctor. A doctor. Yeah, so. that's true. So, yeah. I, okay. So let me just go. I'll I'll bump it up a little bit. I'll say a six point nine. No, mm. I got it upside down. It's a six point six. Uh, I didn't blow up any heads because of that, though. All right. So six point six. <laughs> oh, Stephen wrote it down for me. Yep. Uh, apparently, our podcast medium is now going visual with the drawing yep. penises, and Stephen giving it a six point eight nine seven six. Is that is that number uh, special for a reason, or? I just wanted to make the math hard for you. Oh, it's not hard for me. Excel does all the work. I just type in the numbers. Sam. Well, then I wanted to make the math hard for Bill Gates. All right, you know I I'm struggling as well <laughs> with this, and like Andrew here, and I've got to cover my eyes because I'm I'm so distracted. <laughs> and, um, so hairy. It does. The movie succeeds in what it sets itself out to do, and that is to to make you laugh, and to make you uncomfortably uh, enjoy it. And because of that, I. It's not a perfect movie. It's not a perfect comedy, but at the same time, I enjoy the snot out of it. So I'm, I'm going to give it in the light of this movie a six point six point nine six nine. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just for just for like uh, contrast, what did like Schindler's List get? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's that's a perfect. We have we, I don't think we've done that one. We have not done cow. Schindler's List. There's no Thank way the on Lord. this planet I would do that movie for this podcast. Uh, I'm going to give this movie a five. It was funny. Wow. And oh yeah. man, you hate on this movie. I'm no, everybody hating. should have given it a five. Honestly, we were all flailing, and Sean did it right. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's you're, not, you're not wrong. It's not a good movie. It's <laughs> funny. I I had a good time, but I mean. Am I ever going to watch this again? No. 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 But no. Uh, would I recommend it to somebody? Probably, yeah, under the age of 40. <laughs> but Who's a dude? Who's a who's dude? Who's like not that tightly wound? Yeah. I mean, there's probably girls that I would recommend it to if they I were. I told my wife she should watch it, but really yeah, just but the... wanted to see her reaction. Yeah. yeah. But again, right. and again, I watched this with my wife. Like I, We watched it together as we watch most of these movies, and... Um, the, my, my, the, I did kind of look over to her reaction when the, uh, <laughs> asphyxiation part happened cause I wasn't expecting it. And so when he's there holding his wiener, I look over <laughs> at her and she's just, it, it was more of a look of shock than disgust. She was just like, Oh, there's a wiener on TV. Like it, yeah. she was, she was as surprised right. as I was. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Okay. Time for this last little segment that I do, and I will pick a clip at random and say... There you go. That was... Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> that was the scream from We Summon the Darkness. That, that oh, girl that... falling off the balcony. She fell off, off, the, uh, off the second floor. That, <laughs> that scream, remember, the scream was longer than the fall would have taken. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. It's a three-second scream. I love it. Oh, my God. That's such a great clip. Oh, my gosh. I forgot I had that. Okay. This is the part of the show where I read a, a movie quote from my big, giant billboard of uh, or poster of movie quotes. Um, is this the thing now where I have to read last week's and tell you what it is? Are we yes. doing that? Yeah. Gosh, dang well, it. we okay. got to have a payout. Um, yeah, because we didn't know last week's. Yeah, made it, ma. Top of the world. That was last week's. Made it, ma. Top of the world. Anybody that, know that one? Carpenter. Are you researching it right now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, White Heat, nineteen forty nine. There you go. That's oh, that's, that's why it was familiar to me. Uh, this <laughs> one we will all know. The uh, this this one we'll all know. Again, the game is if you know you, the listener, know this movie quote. And you want a free sticker, just send me this through Twitter or email or Facebook and say, this is the movie that this is from, and I will mail you a sticker. That's how this goes. Wow. Uh, yep. Quote number 34. This is Ripley, last survivor of the Nost... Oh, gosh. Nostromo. Oh, how do I... That's close. Yeah. Nostromo. Nostromo. Signing off. How do I... Why am I having a hard time reading names tonight? Jeez. No, Sean, anyway. do you, you don't smell like burnt toast, do you? No, I'm fine. I just, okay. I can't. I, I'm You're just checking out a little bit, though. I mean, Nostromo. I know that's not right. I'm doing it wrong on purpose now. Okay. <laughs> it's been a weird day, all right? It's been a weird day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Poor kid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure why I deserve that. Well, I'm going to put something in the mail for you so that. Uh, yeah, just send him a little something. <laughs> I'm going to send you a little yeah. letter. I appreciate that. I, I really do. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, I, we did have a Twitter. We did have Jesse. Um, uh, Jesse uh, chimed in on our Twitter post and said, "Hey, um, does everyone in Ready Player One count like Scorpion, Batman, and the Iron Giant as themselves?" And I said, "No, no." <laughs> um, uh, listen, the first rule of improv, Sean, is yes and. Uh, um, well. Yes, but this is not improv. This is my podcast in which I say no to a lot of things. A lot of things. Oh, my gosh. This is the part of the show where if uh, our, our podcast guest, I would say, hey, tell people how we can find your podcast. But, Steve, you don't have a podcast. You make records instead. So please tell our listeners how they can buy your music. Nobody buys music anymore, so don't worry about it. Just um, if I run into you at the Trader Joe's or something, just buy me some Wasabi peas. I'm really into those are, right are now. Are you the one sitting outside with the cardboard sign? 
No, that's you talking about the guy on Instagram. Uh, no, I, I'm at uh, I'm at steveeverettmusic.com, or if you're feeling '90s, steveeverett.net. And uh, but yeah, you you can just Google Steve Everett, a bunch of stuff will come up, um, Here's including the stuff. including the fact that Clint Eastwood played a character named Steve Everett in the '90s movie Absolute Power. That's cool. Oh, nice. or, no, Blood Money. Sorry, Blood Money. That's cool. I did not know that. And no, that's oh, yeah. not where you got the name from. No, for you, sure. You were not, you were not uh, named yeah, after I that. I put guy. a new record out uh, into April, so I've just been uh, traveling around trying to get people to listen to that thing. It's called Little Winds, and you should listen to it. And it's a great little it was a great little album. I know is that we... Your, uh, is that your vag tag trip? <laughs> <laughs> it comes full circle. Yeah. Um, like, okay. Uh, but I will do this real quick. That's all you get. Otherwise, we'll get um. Yeah, we gotta of the, we gotta pay for that shit if we. We'll get demonetized. Yeah. Oh wait. <laughs> oh wait. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not. When I issue. when I put my own songs on YouTube, they get uh. Yeah, they trigger they like flat. an automatic. Do they warning. really? Oh. Yeah, yeah. And I have to like Jeez. circle back and be like, nope, it's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one's yeah. trying to steal this. It's fine anyway. <laughs> that's uh. That's the beginning two bar two measures of what's in the well from. Your newest album, which I love. It's a love horror it. movie now on Netflix. What's yeah, in the well. it's the sequel to The Ring. What's in the well? <laughs> it's it, it'd be scarier if it was What is in the well? Yeah. Oh Instead yeah. Of, if it's not a contraction, you know. Yes, contractions make it way less scary. It's All right, that's it. I have nothing else to say other than this has been fun as always. Thank you so much, Steve, for for coming on the show. Please leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, that would be very helpful if, if you're going to be not nice. done that. Uh, well, if you're not so far, we have nothing but a five star review. So I, that's, that's pretty great. Um, I have seen some people, some friends on you know, podcasts who have, they're getting these, like I, I literally saw someone post that they got a three star review because iTunes didn't have their entire backlog on available. And it's like, that's not Aww. the podcast fault. That's an iTunes issue. And like, why would you give a three star review for that? Like that's, that's such a dick thing. Yeah. Teacher, so, teachers understand stupid reviews. It's probably Daniel Stern. Probably is. Yeah. Uh, so our website, cheapseatreviews.libsyn.com, facebook.com slash cheapseatreviews, and at Twitter, or Twitter is at cheapseatcast. And those places, uh, especially on Twitter, you can find the links to our merch store. We have T-shirts and stickers and, and, and magnets and all kinds of cool stuff. And go there and... At the end of the month, end of September, starting today as you hear this, the store will have a sale. There'll be stuff on sale. Ooh, sweet. Pretty cool. And as I round this out, I will say this one last thing. I just got messaged by our good friend Cameron from the Green Shirt Podcast saying, Tom Petty in The Postman, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon in Jay and Silent Bob, and Keanu Reeves always... Always be, be my, maybe. my maybe. Yeah. So thanks, for Cam, for sneaking that in right at the end of the, of the episode. Sweet. That's going to do it. On behalf of Andrew... Oh, next week we're doing something very different. I wanted to do something a little bit more um, good. I'm just teasing. I want to do something a little <laughs> bit less... Uh, well, I was going to say less dick, but now that I think about it, that's actually not true. We're going to watch oh, no. In the Heart of the Sea... Which is the movie that's Ooh. inspired by the book that that is the true story that inspired Moby Dick. So there's your Dick reference. <laughs> and on that note, I'm gonna say, see you next week. We, do we press the button now? Great. Are we done? No, we have to. Uh, are we out? Today. This is Cheap Seat Reviews.